Hi everyone, William Garcia, Partner Solutions Architect at AWS. Today I'm excited to talk about automation and Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS or Rosa. Are you looking at how you can automate the creation of Rosa clusters? Well, today you can use Ansible, for example, or a GitOps approach, or even the Rosa command line interface. Today, instead, I'm going to be focusing on Terraform, an infrastructure code tool developed by HashiCorp. You, as a developer, will be writing HCL templates using the HashiCorp configuration language for that. Your starting point is going to be looking at the Terraform registry. If you're using a Terraform Cloud and Enterprise, you will be likely using a private Terraform registry, but otherwise you can also use the public Terraform registry. In both cases, you can start bringing in Terraform providers that are going to help you to automate AWS resources or even Kubernetes resources. So to get started with Rosa, the first step is really to think about the networking components required for uh, deploying Rosa. You would need to deploy Rosa inside a virtual private cloud or VPC along with some nets. To do that, we bring in the AWS or the AWS Cloud Control provider. These two providers have to automate hundreds of AWS services. Next step is to look at how we create our cluster. To do that, we start with the Rosa provider. The Rosa provider is developed by the Red Hat Cloud Services team and it allows you to define all the attributes necessary for your cluster. Give it a name, for example, or define a starting version, whether your cluster runs on a single or multiple availability zones. Post cluster creation, you can also use this Rosa provider to add capacity to your cluster through machine pools. So with Terraform, you can describe one or multiple machine pools. And this is how you are going to add Amazon EC2 instances to your worker nodes to run more applications, for example. From there, you can obviously uh, plan for upgrades, for example, going from version four to the latest version. And you can also bring in identity providers like LDAP compliant identity providers or OpenID Connect identity providers. Then usually administrators are really interested in fully automating all the initial configurations and integrations they want. For example, uh, Rosa provides about 540 ISV and community integrations through the operator hub. With the operator hub, you can find Kubernetes native applications dedicated, for example, to logging, CI-CD tools, or security tools like the compliance operator. To automate those, custom resources, you can bring in the Kubernetes provider. Then at this point, you're already ready to replicate your cluster across, for example, multiple environments, test, dev, and production, or multiple teams and business units. The next step is typically when you start deploying applications, you want to give these applications access to other AWS services. To do that, you can use the IAM Terraform module and bring in custom IAM policies or managed policies that are attached to your applications. This is going to be helpful to apply the principle of least privileged access and use temporary credentials for your application to access AWS services. I hope this quick overview of what you can do with a single tool with Terraform is helpful. I will share a few links with you in the description. Be sure to stay tuned for other videos like this in the future, and thank you so much.